So you know that phrase that the adults in your life used to say of, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. That's how I'm feeling. Hello, 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 and the warmest of welcome to today's video. For those who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. For those who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoy my videos. I put out videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion to slightly more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do head down, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm all about living life loud and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you and just celebrating who you are. Celebrate yourself and celebrating others. So, we've got two topics for today's video. I'm going to share with you a bit of a long shot purchase fail and why I'm a little frustrated with the brand slash store. And then also I've got a Kurt Geiger purchase to share with you and see what you think. Um, now, before we get into it, let's talk bag of the day. I used a couple of bags um, this past couple of days. I've used my um, two Marble Bay's waters. So I used my Trippy Tiger when I was out shopping in Cheltenham. And then my most, the one that I've used the past few days has been this one. It is so heavy. I have so much in it. It is really, really heavy at the moment. Um, but do you know what? It is so fabulous that it doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm just going to give myself a quick little spritz as well because, oh, I don't know. I don't spend a huge amount on fragrances because I don't feel I need to because I've just bought another bottle of Lacoste Red, which I absolutely adore. I just, mm, it is so fresh. Oh, joyous. Mm, beautiful. If you haven't tried this particular one, I so recommend it. I think it's absolutely wonderful. That's why the bag's quite heavy, because it's a glass bottle and it's full. So, you know, that's quite heavy. So, why am I annoyed at Longshop? Why am I annoyed? Um, there's a cut, so I've had a bit of a purchase fail. So, let's wind it all the way back. Um, obviously there was the announcement regarding the latest Longchamp collaboration with graffiti artist, Parisian graffiti artist, Andre. Very exciting. Spoke about the collection in a recent short that I put out. I thought it was really interesting, vibrant, fun, playful, a really nice, um, collection and actually what was great was that they hadn't overly hyped up the prices because it was a limited edition they were still really reasonable still in line with the um les pliages or the collections that they would normally sit within because there were accessories bags ready to wear some travel pieces so you had a few different options there were some really lovely items at reasonable price points so I took a look at this and initially, although I really liked it, I didn't think that there was anything particularly for me. I did like the scarves. I wanted one of the scarves, particularly this one here, but the um, size of it, it was 60 by 60, which is a bit more like a silk square, I guess. Um, whereas I prefer to have kind of a longer scarf. So that one didn't quite work, but I thought I would like a piece of this. And I've been using my Longchamp pouch so much, um, the one from the club line, this one, that I thought, why don't I go for a pouch on handle? Because then you could have a, a mini bag if you wanted to. Um, alternatively, you could just use it as an SLG within the bag, or it could just be a really pretty ornament from a limited edition collection. So I took a look at the colors and I saw the pink and I thought, right, pink, that's what I'm going to go for. Pink, pouch on handle. So, just make that decision. Fast forward to kind of Monday, Tuesday, which I think is, if today's the first, must have been the 24th, maybe, 23rd, 24th. Editing Nick here. I actually placed the request on the 21st. So, earlier than I thought. So I did give it a little bit of time, you know, I did it a little bit in advance. And I think, oh, how do I go about maybe putting myself down? I know what I'll do, I'll call the Regent Street store. Gave them a quick call, spoke to someone there, and um, they said, yep, okay, that's fine. Here's my number, send through what you would like, and we'll put one on reserve for you, and then you'll be sent a payment link once they become available on the 26th, and you just need to make the payment. Okay, absolutely fine. Thank you for your help, much appreciated. Sent the text that they asked for, and they said, and they came back and said, yep, sorted await the payment link. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. The 26th rolls around. I don't receive a payment link. I don't receive a payment link. And I thought, okay, that's a bit strange. And at this point, should I have chased the individual that had done that for me? Yes. 
I should have done. But I didn't. I instead went online, saw that they had some in stock, and I thought, actually, never mind. Mu something must have got a little bit awry here. Rather than chasing down to figure that out, I can really quickly just buy one online. They're in stock, no worries. So I did that on the 26th. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Your order has been received. Three to four um, business days for delivery. Excellent. That was on the 26th, which I think is Wednesday. Fantastic. So three to four business days. I would probably be expecting to see that on Saturday, let's say. So that's fine. I think I've ordered it. I'm waiting. I'm excited. The money has been frozen in my account as they do, waiting for the payment to, to clear. No problem at all. I'm then out shopping on Friday and I check my emails because I've been looking to see whether the item's been dispatched for a couple of days. It hasn't. I then look at my emails on Friday and I go, oh my word. My mum says, what? What's happened? Oh, they've cancelled my long shop delivery. She said, oh my word, I thought that your flight, we thought that my flights to France, the fr flights to France had been cancelled. They had. Just, we got that email about five hours later. Thank you, British Airways. Anyway, that's not today's story. Um, so they cancelled it. And they sent through what I perceive to be a little bit of kind of a flippant email, really, where it talks about, you know, victim of its own success. It's no longer available, but don't worry, we've not taken the money. Well, of course you've not taken the money because you haven't delivered anything. So I wouldn't expect you to take the money because you haven't given anything. So it was just a little frustrating because I know they're trying to keep things jovial, but I think you've sent this email on Friday. I've made the purchase on Wednesday. You've sent this email on Friday. The money has been on hold all that time. All that time, it's been three days, but still. The money has been on hold and it's taken you three days to tell me they're out of stock. That for me isn't good enough. So now I'm doubly annoyed because not only has the sales executive or sales associate that I spoke to who said that they put one to one side not sent me the links. So I've not been able to purchase through that. Yes, I should have chased. Yes, I should have chased. But still, they didn't do that. I then went and just took matters into my own hands and placed the order online thinking, no, no harm done. Never mind. No harm done. I can still get it this way. They then cancel that. I then pick up the phone to the Regent Street store. Well, who did you speak to? I can't remember. And actually, looking back through the text, I can see who it was addressed to, So, but I couldn't remember at the time and I couldn't check my phone in order to see. I can't remember. Oh, it doesn't. that's not how we would normally do something like a pre-order. Okay, okay, understood. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to fix it? Because now, not only have you not delivered of what you said you initially would, you've now not delivered for a second time through the online order that I placed. So now I'm doubly frustrated. So what are you going to do to fix it? They had a look to see if anything had been placed in the back, had been placed on hold. No, sorry, Mr. Snell, nothing's been placed on hold. Fine. Can I get hold of one? Oh, no, we're out of stock. Brilliant. Brilliant. Can you try and find me some stock? Okay, yeah, we'll try and find you some stock. Is this the best number to call you on? Yes, it is. Great, we'll speak to you later. Fantastic, look forward to hearing from you. That was Friday. Friday, kind of three, four o'clock. Didn't hear from them for the rest of the day. Fair enough, busy store, get it. They're probably working through pre-orders. They're probably working through other stuff. Fair enough. Then Saturday rolls around, still no contact. Still no contact, not so much as a text, not so much as a missed call, nothing. Great. Sunday, no contact. And you just think, I'm a good customer of yours. I am a customer that really does celebrate your customer service, your products, you know, the brand experience. I would like to think that I'm very loyal to them in that sense and I celebrate them in that sense. This, for me, has been a really unfortunate customer experience because they didn't deliver on what they said they were going to. They then cancelled my order, which, you know, it does happen. But, and then they haven't got back in contact. And I think, yes, I'm hunting down a pouch. I'm not upset over the fact that the item, it hasn't materialised. You know, if I'm that upset over a pouch, you know, I need to get out more, ultimately. 
I'm not upset over the item. I'm not really upset over the customer experience because again, there's, you know, there's worse things than, you know, not being able to have a great experience through a, through a high-end brand. You know, it's not the end of the world, but I just think it, it's slightly, it's made me take a bit of a step back and think, right, I've had really, really good experiences with you. I've never had a bad experience with this brand. This is my first one, but it has therefore made me think, right, I'm going to put you on pause for now. I'm, I had two items that were in my mind to go and buy. I was actually going in next week um, whilst I was in London to go and buy them. There was a, I wanted to do a custom Le Cliage and I wanted to buy another Rousseau in the yellow mock crock in the medium size. Those were the two items that I wanted to go and get. Um, I'm actually decided that I'm not going to go and buy those because I feel disappointed in the customer service that I've had. And I will be picking this up with them. I will drop them an email because I think that they have a right to know and I think that they have a right to rectify the issue. But as far as I'm concerned, they've had a couple of instances where they could have rectified it. The fact that I wasn't sent the link my order through the website should have rectified that issue. It didn't. Now then this individual that I've spoken to should have been able to rectify the two previous issues. They've not done so. So they've kind of fallen at every hurdle as far as I'm concerned when it comes to this particular customer experience. So like I said, I'm putting them on pause. I won't be buying from Longchamp for a little while because I am a good customer of theirs. I own a number of their bags, a number of their SLGs. I buy a lot of gifts from there as well. I don't think that it should matter whether you buy one item or a hundred items. I think you should still be treated the same way. And it's a shame because I've had such incredible experiences up until now. They have just really fallen at this particular hurdle. And um, I will pick it back up with them. I will pick it back up with them. So yes, that's, that's that experience. I'm a bit disappointed because I really did like this uh, these items, but there are loads of great content on these items. I won't be one of the individuals doing a reveal of this or doing an unboxing. For me, the shine has been taken off of them. If they called me now and said, we've got one for you, no, thank you. I will keep my money. You can keep your product. So I won't be owning one of these. It's taken the shine off of it for me, but there are fantastic um, reveals of these. So for example, the channel Grab My Clutch, do go and check out um, the channel. It's fantastic and there's a great, there's a great reveal on there as well. Um, one of the beautiful, beautiful bags. I won't reveal which one, um, but do go and check that video out. Um, so, you know, I, it clearly wasn't for me. What's for you won't pass you. This past me wasn't for me. I won't be chasing it. I'm disappointed and therefore I'm putting my purchasing from Longchamp on pause because I don't think that if you're disappointed in a brand, I don't think you should keep putting your money in until you've got the, until you've kind of gotten over the fact that you're a bit disappointed in the whole situation, then, then don't buy from them. And that's where I'm at. I'm a little bit disappointed. So will I buy from them again? Of course I will. I love the products. I do love the brand. But they have, in this instance, let me down. It'll take me a couple of weeks. I'll get over myself and then I'll go back in and we'll have a jolly good time again. I'm just a bit disappointed at this particular set of circumstances. And it's all over such, it's all over a pouch, you know. So the item doesn't really matter. I'm disappointed in the experience I've had. I'm disappointed in the fact that I've had to do the chasing. Um, it should have been seamless when I've bought over the phone from the store before. It's been seamless. Why this was any different, I don't know. So, bit disappointed there. Not particularly happy. Not particularly impressed. I'll get over myself. I'll move on from it and we'll all be okay. Anyway, that's the story there. Thought I would just share it with you because I'm sure you probably never thought that you would hear me say a bad word about Longchamp. But here we are. I'm probably dampening my chances of getting a brand deal now, aren't I? Um, if that's ever in the future. But do you know what? They, I think they sometimes need to know when they make a mistake. And in this instance, they've, they've made a mistake. So there we are. Not ideal. Mm. Oh, no. Ugh. So I was about to do my Kurt Geiger reveal. Where I put the bag down on some mud earlier in the car park. There was mud on the bottom of the bag and I just put that all over my carpet. One moment, please. So that's probably gonna leave a stain, but I think that's probably in keeping with, you know, the mood of this video. So let's brighten that up. I'm gonna share with you a purchase from Kurt Geiger now because I'm excited about these. I have looked at these on the website a number of times and then I saw them today and I thought, you know what, let's go for it. So they are in this bag here. 
the one that had mud on the bottom of it. It is a pair of shoes, because of course you can see a shoe box. So without further ado, let's crack on. KG, Kurt Geiger. These are the Wicked White Synthetic Sneakers in the size 43, which is a size nine. Um, I've talked about how I go down a size. I'm normally a size 10. For Kurt Geiger shoes, I tend to go down a size because they stretch a little bit and I prefer them to be closer to my foot so they don't rub. So, they are in here. And three, two, one. Ta-da! So I've been absolutely loving knitted trainers. I've been loving my white knitted trainers. I bought a cheapo pair from New Look to begin with just to see if I got on with the style. I did, therefore I thought I would take the plunge and I would buy these Kurt Geiger ones, which I am absolutely loving. So as I mentioned, these are called The Wicked. I think they are really, really fun and fabulous. I love the fact they've got this white knit. You've got a different coloured leather here, this kind of very soft, silky, almost grey leather. You've then got a white sole here with the black here. They are chunky. They are, you know, almost a little bit sports-like. They don't have a conventional lace. They have this pull here that you use in order to tighten them. Um, it's almost like, um, like cargo trousers kind of thing. Um, they have the Kurt Geiger, KG Kurt Geigers on the front there. Kurt Geiger emblem. They're just really nice and chunky. I love them. I think they're absolutely fabulous. On the interior, they just have KG Kurt Geiger written in there. These are really, really nice. I like them a lot. So let me get the other one out for you so you can see them both. So that is what those look like. I think that they are great. As I said, I got them in a 43. They had them in a range of different colours. So they had them in black, they had them in khaki, they had them in a soft grey, they had them in white. I was debating between the black, the soft grey and the white. I was debating between the grey and the white and I thought would the grey last a bit longer or not show wear quite as much? And I thought, no, actually, I know that I want the white ones, so I'm just gonna buy the white ones. Um, so, yes, these are great. Depending on how I get on with them, maybe I will circle back and buy the black ones or buy the light grey ones. The khaki ones aren't for me, but maybe this will be one of the shoes quite similar to the Donnies or the Whitworths where I buy multiples. We shall see. But I think they're really great. I love the fact they have this slightly more sporty vibe to them. Very chunky. Fabulous. Let me know what you think. Do you own the Kurt Geiger Wickeds? What do you think of this particular shoe? You know, I really like the fact as well that I'll probably dress these up. I'll probably wear these with, you know, my pink suit or something and just give it all a little bit of an edge. Smarten up the trainer, but casual up the outfit. Do you see what I mean there? Anyway, that is those. So there we have it, everyone. That is the end of story time, plus my Kurt Geiger reveal. Let me know what you think of these particular items. Let me know what you think of my story time. Have you ever had that happen to you with a brand? And in what, in which case, what did you decide to do about it? Like I said, I'm just putting my spending with them on pause for a minute. I will go back to it, but I'm putting it on pause for the moment, and then we'll see where, see where we land. But they need to make, they need to kind of earn a few more brownie points from me now because they've lost some. So thank you as always for watching everyone and I really look forward to seeing my next video. Take care. Bye now. Mwah.